What you're about to see is an extended version of me building this house in SketchUp, me drawing it in SketchUp. Uh, it is long, it is kind of boring. It is the kind of thing that you should watch if you really want to see exactly how I did it in SketchUp. And I think that's a really valuable tool for those of you that are looking to design your own house in 3D modeling software like SketchUp. So uh, continue watching if that's what you're looking to do. If you just want to see an overview of the house, uh, of me doing it in SketchUp and just kind of a tour of how I did it, um, just and then move right on to the framing videos and seeing how I actually built it in real life, uh, then you should click here or there or somewhere uh, right now to watch the SketchUp overview video, which is it's about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, and it just goes through the finished product. So uh, enjoy, guys, and I hope this is helpful. Okay, last little detail I forgot to execute was I need to take all of these out of the wall one layer. They need to go back onto layer zero, and now I can get rid of wall one, and not have any obfuscations, and now I can go back and cut out these framed openings just like I did on the other wall. Neat little thing I just found out by accident was a hit K, and what that is, that is uh, in under view, edge style, that's back edges, and it allows you to see uh, the edges of the geometry that are being um, obfuscated by other geometry in front of it. So it's just kind of cool, you can look into your walls and just get an idea of what's behind, um, if you want to, but... I'm going to leave that disabled because I've found that the more stuff I'm showing at a time, the more confusing it is as to what I'm snapping to and to know what plane I'm actually on, which is a huge problem. So this kind of stuff in my mind is is useful if I want to be like, oh, what's back there? Uh, oh, what's back there? Oh, how does that look like? Oh, okay, I can see it. And then I just hit K again to get rid of it. Okay, so now I'm going to select all the geometry, select all of my stuff in this new wall I've just created. So I go through and... I think I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other wall, lock it. <coughs> just uh, just in case I mess something up and move something I shouldn't. I don't want to... I want to make sure it doesn't happen because that can happen and you don't even know you did it. Uh, so I'm going to First, I'm going to create a group out of it, like I did on the other side, then I'm going to lock it. And now I am going to... Oh, right, you couldn't hide it before. That's fine, because when you lock it, you can't hide it, but that's fine. I'm not trying to hide it. I have my group selected, and I'm going to put the group now... Oh, it's locked, so I can't change the group. Unlock. I'm going to put it into... Well, i got to create a new wall. This is my t second temporary wall, just to make it easier for me to work here. Wall 2. Naming convention is absolutely atrocious. Okay, so this is going into wall 2, and now I can lock it. Okay, so now wall 2 I can make appear and disappear, and the only other thing that I want to change is on the other wall. Yeah. Get rid of wall 2 for a second so I can see wall 1. Is here. Now that, uh, Oh, look at that. Very interesting. So what happened was, all of my... Yeah, I have to uh, I have to explode this. So I have this group that's in wall 1. I don't want that. I want my groups to be... <coughs> I want these... This is just a grouping... I don't know how I want to deal with that. I want everything in layer 0. Until the high level. Um... These are just groupings of components. So these components should all be in layer zero, it's fine. And all their entities should also be in layer zero. <clears throat> so that is the case. But since these are just logical groupings, I want to keep these also in layer zero. 
and then the sheathing also I want in layer. These are the individual components. Yeah, so this is a problem that when you explode and and regroup, this happens. Just figure out the best way around this. So I want all this in layer zero. So now everything is in layer zero. And now what I want to do is I want to select this stuff. Now I got my all my sheathing components in layer zero, and then I got my two groupings of uh, of, of uh, frame walls here in layer zero. And then I'm going to put I'm going to make a group out of all of that. And then that's going to go into, I think it was wall one. And now I can do this. But now that I have my grouping, I'm going to lock that. And it's in wall one already, so I don't have to make any more changes. So I'm going to lock this where it is. And I'm going to show wall two and make sure it's the same situation here. So I'm going to unlock this. So my, my group of everything is in wall two, but let me go inside of that and you can see, okay, good, my my, compo my sheathing components are in layer zero um, and my wall components are in layer zero. Uh, I'm not ready to make <coughs> uh, groupings of this wall yet like this because I don't really have this wall complete, so I'm going to hold off on that. So I'm just going to go back, select this whole group. It's all in wall two and I'm going to lock it and we're going to move on. Alright, so next step is going to be to do the end walls here. So let's take a little look how this is going to work. All right. So first things first, I want to get rid of these uh, the sheathing that I put on here. Let's hide this stuff. Okay, we got a framed opening to deal with here. So let's do it. Um, got some other stuff to deal with here as well. Let's. Uh, Let's take a look in here. Okay, so here's some important stuff I need to point out. Let me let me just hide this as well. Um, I did some funky framing here because I wanted to try to tie this, for lack of better terms, this cantilever. It's not really a cantilever, I guess, but this like extra bit of framing that comes off the house. Um, actually, I'm going to show you the difference because I didn't actually change it over here. Okay, so you see here how I did this? Um, I have I have basically, you know, I'm skipping ahead here a little bit, but I just want to, this is important for the, uh, actually, is this important? Does this even matter? I don't think it does, because I don't think that affects. No, this wall doesn't affect that at all, I don't think. No, it doesn't. So, let's uh let's just do this wall. All right. So, what do we got here? Uh we got to get the height of this wall. Let's drop inside for a moment. Ah. Okay. Get a good view in here. Okay, cool. All right, so let's get the height. Well, the height's the same. I can see already. The height's the same as every everything else here. We got six foot three quarters. Okay, so that's identical. Let's build this thing out. Let's first build like a standard wall. Okay, so let's get in here. I'm gonna do 
three and a half inches. Go up on the blue axis. Snap, snap, snap. We're going to pull this guy all the way out. Snappity snap. Okay, got that. Let's duplicate. Let's make this a component. And now let's bring this guy all the way up to the top. Snap to the blue axis. And we'll bring you up here. Okay. We can actually duplicate. Now, those are locked. Let's just make a new one. Okay, so we can actually use a rectangle for this. I don't know why I'm not doing that. That would be smarter to do. So we got three and a half, and this is going to be one and a half. So, 1.5 comma 3.5. There it is, and we'll pull that all the way up. Okay, there we go. Make that a component. Okay. Now, before we get too into this, let's talk about the... Uh, let me actually hide this wall over here. I think it's wall two. No, it's wall one. Let's hide that. Let's talk about... Uh, I'm going to hide this, and then I'm going to show, I'm going to go to view, and I'm going to show hidden geometry so you can see what I'm talking about. It's kind of tough to, so you see this 2x4 here, that's invisible. Well, we got our, we got our 2x4, I'm actually going to, it's kind of hard to make this out, I'll get rid of it. We got our 2x4 here, so the way you do uh, corner posts on on stick framing is you basically create another one of these. Let me actually just do this right now. I'm going to do it on the long walls. Um, I'm going to unlock this. I'm going to get in here and I'm going to duplicate. I'll lock this to the green axis and I'm going to snap it right there. Uh, this is how you generally deal with um, deal with uh, like corner posts on stick framing. So if I was to uh, unhide this guy, what this create this creates like like a like a solid like like a block on the end with like lots of good connections. So you can connect to this guy right here can be connected to both of the uh, both of the two buys behind it, two by fours behind it. And you're supposed to put some blocking in here, which basically is just in between this. It would just be half in some pieces of half inch plywood to space them out and to so you can like nail those together and uh and that be a solid block um, but I'm gonna do this a little bit differently because of this reason over here. I'm gonna go a little bit crazier with it. I'm gonna have these uh these pieces of cedar. As uh, as supports for this little outshoot of the uh, of the loft decking or loft rafters and framing subfloor framing, and it looks like what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to use hardware, like just big galvanized like lag screws to like go straight into the framing members from from this cedar, so. And I actually might do that from the inside so you don't even see anything. Huh. That might be pretty cool, actually. Um, in any case, probably I'll go in from the outside. The point is, I have three 2x4s right next to each other here for that connection. Um, and the reason is because I want something really beefy, a really beefy post that I can really sink into um, to support these guys. If I had just two 2x4s like I have over here, like so, um, then, you know, there's going to be a gap here, and 
I'm not going to, it's not going to be as good of a connection for those big lag screws um, as it could be. Uh, in fact, maybe lag screws aren't even the way to go. Maybe using like carriage bolts or something all the way through would be even better. In fact, that would be better. I like that. Galvanized or stainless steel carriage bolts. Heck yeah. I think stainless steel carriage bolts. I think I just made my decision. Stainless steel is even better than galvanized um, when it comes to water and moisture resistance. Um, and this is a critical connection, so I really want to make sure that that's good. Uh, you know, I, I consider doing like joinery and having like, you know, mortise and tenon stuff, but man, I don't have the time or the patience for that right now. Um, I'm just going to use hardware. Um, so that's why I'm going to do this. That is why I'm going to go in and I'm going to move this, snap it right there, and I'm actually going to make another copy. I'm going to do three, and that's going to give me that super bomber connection. Let me, let me unhide that piece. Now I got this really beefy corner post right here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now. Whoops. Okay, I'm going to switch my walls. Okay. That's weird. Oh, it's not weird at all. Okay. All right. Let's lock it to the green axis. Lock it to the green axis and snap. Okay. All right. I'm going to lock that group again. I'm actually going to lock this one as well and I'm going to disappear that I think I actually had it the other way around before so let me, let me do it that way I want to be on the outside okay copy this guy over lock it to the red Snap to the edge. All right, now I'm going to start my. Uh, <clears throat> actually, before I even do my 16 on center studs, let me put in that framed opening. I think that's. I like that better. I like actually. I'm going to do that from now on. I'm going to do my framed openings, uh, frame them in the wall, before I even start to put my 16 on center studs. It's, it makes a lot more sense. It's like less cluttered, and. Uh, I can deal with that afterwards. Okay, so let's see here. We got from the edge of the wall to the king stud. We got 11 and a half. Let's start with that. dimensions two foot five and a quarter okay try using the rectangle tool again that's R and this is going to be 1.5 comma 3.5 And I forgot what that dimension was. Story of my life. One little distraction, and I have no idea what I'm doing. Two foot five and a quarter. Alright, so I've already filmed how I'm doing this. Um, oops. Pull that off here. I'm going to type two foot five and three quarter inches. I've already filmed how I'm framing this stuff. I'm just going to shut my mouth and uh, 
just show you the money. Let's just get it done. Okay, and always, as always it seems, I am constantly forgetting to put in a double, uh, double sill plate. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, there it is, my wall with the framed opening. I just want to make absolutely sure I got a couple measurements right. Three foot by two foot. And to be absolutely sure, we got 11 and a half in from the outside and two foot five and three quarters up off the sole plate. Two foot five and a quarter. Looks like I might have done something wrong. Okay, so this window needs to be two foot six and three quarters off the top of the sill down to the Yep, something's off. Gotta fix it. Okay, down. For the sill. Two foot six and three quarters. Somehow I'm half an inch off, so I got a lower half an inch. Check it again. Two foot six and three quarters. Two foot six and three quarters. And to the king stud. Okay, I think we good. Um, and also is a little bit different than the way I did it in the previous drawing. But I did my 16 on center from this wall, so 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, and then whatever the remainder is. Okay, now we got to go around. Okay, now let's go around and do our other wall. So let's go over here and hide this sheathing. And this other wall is just a typical frame wall. And we're going to have our leftover, just like how we did here, we're going to do our leftover on the same side. So 
I can just basically copy this. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save a little time. And I'm going to add, add, add. Actually, I'm going to leave out framed opening completely. bad boy. Lock to the green axis and there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make a I'm going to make a group out of this wall. That. And I also want to group this wall too. So let me do that real quick. Whoops. Selection. Oh, <laughs> I messed up this framed opening. I gotta fix that. I will do that in one moment. I didn't put the uh, the header with two of those two by sixes on edge. I just did a. I just replicated what I had in the other model. So let me fix that. So. Let's fix that first. Okay. Whoa. Not what I wanted to do. Now it's a group, so i got to go and edit the group first. Okay, what are we looking at here? We need to... Eh, I can put in the 2x6s first. That's fine. Okay, so rectangle. rectangle this is going to be 5.25 comma 1.5 okay push this out I can't see anything over there so I'm going to rotate around I don't know if I went to the right place let's do it over here okay cool now I can rotate back over so I don't, so that wall doesn't get in my way. Okay, so let's, let's push these up. Okay, and let's make this a component. And now we can duplicate it. Axis and boom. Okay, so that's that. That's all still in a group. All nice. I'm going to call this wall three for now. Create a new layer and put this entire group in layer wall three so I can make it go away if I need to. Again, uh, I'm going to stress again that I'm not doing, I'm going to go back and do a proper, like, organizational, like, logical organization of layers later, my three walls, and now when I do this one, it's going to be four walls. Uh, these are just temporary assignments. Oops, walls. This is just gonna, these are just temporary just so I can easily hide and show for now. Okay, so we got, I believe these are 16 on center. They must be. They are, so I'm just going to copy and paste these two. Edit the group. Okay. Move them, walk to the red axis, and move 32 inches. And then I should have 16 on center to this last one. Which I do. Okay, this wall is done. Didn't actually put this group in wall four yet. Okay, so there we go. There we go, guys. You can uh, get a sense for enclosure here and what we're what we're after. Got these four walls, and we can just make them go away.
And that's the basic premise for how I'm going to be doing, how I'm going to be layering and grouping uh, the rest of the rest of this house. All right, let's just uh, get some sheathing on the two end walls here. So we're going to create a new rectangle, lock it to the red axis. Oh, green, lock it to the green axis. And I'm going to start with a, uh, with a uh, four by eight sheet. So the unfortunate thing about that is that I'm just slightly over eight feet wide on the trailer, so that's going to be. We're going to do something else with that. Make a component out of that. All right, so let's start on my 16 on center side. Yeah. Okay, looking good there. And what we don't want to do is let's just have a teeny little sliver of plywood on this side. So I'm just going to push this back a bit. Let's see. Let's make a mark. Um, think about this one. Best way to accomplish this. So let's get the uh, let's get the midpoint here. So we'll pull off of this. We're going to get the midpoint. Use that inference engine to get us the midpoint off this stud. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. And remember, now we need to pull to give us that consistent gap. We're going to pull an extra sixteenth off of this. So one slash sixteen. Now we got two guide marks, and I'm going to delete the, that one. So now I can just push. This face to the to this guide. There we go. That's a, that's a, that's a big thing that I was always missing when I first started. I'm honestly just starting to get used to this now while talking to you guys. I'm not getting any. See, the inference points only work where the actual mouse cursor is. So you see how I'm just if I if I push over here, I'm not getting anything. I'm not getting a snap on that line. But if I move start moving my mouse in, I can get the snap. And what I found to be a lot easier is if I just if I if, if I'm moving it like this, if I just go beyond and outside and snap out here, it's much more obvious. And you see how that, that the inference engine catches to that, that line or that edge or that face? Like, just move it off to the side and it knows what you're trying to do. So, uh, I hope that made sense. Um, that's the way I like to do that. Okay, so now let's do this. Let's just make this kind of, we already have a guide mark here, so let's kind of use another method to make another easy mark. We'll pull an eighth of an inch right off that guide mark and have another guide mark. So now, 
we got to put this other piece of plywood in. Um, we can just yeah, that's fine. Uh, we can just well, actually, we can just use this piece. Just do that. Let's make component. Let's, let's get out of editing this component. What's going on here? Why is this component so big? What just happened? Oh, because these guys... <laughs> that's what happened. I put the guides in the component. Good lord. Alright. Let's see if we can edit this component. Alright. We can select these two guides. What can we do with them? Not a whole lot we do. We just got to erase them. Let's get them out of this component. We'll remake them. Okay, so now this component is what it is. It's good. All right, so let's pull. Now that we're out of the component, we'll pull a line over here to the midpoint. That's our midpoint. And now we can pull 1 16th off in this direction and delete this, the midpoint guide point. Alright, and now I can move this, keep it on the red axis, lock it. Can't, now I need to, whoops. Hang on a sec, guys. Didn't copy it. Lock it to the red axis, and let's put it there so we can zoom in and actually lock it into the right place. Okay, so let's move this guy, lock this into the red axis, and on that constraint line. And now we can just trim this off very easily. Oh, you know what? I gotta make this unique first. Don't forget to do that. Okay. Add this component. Make a new line from there. To there. Push. Make it disappear. Okay, very nice. And now we can just alternate that. I will take a copy of this component. Keep it on the blue axis. Snap it to there. And now I will move that up by eighth of an eighth of an inch. Lock it to the blue axis. It's an eighth of an inch. And now I can move it. I will move it by the correct point to snap on the edge here. And that will be this point right there. Lock it on the red axis and snappity snap. We got it. And now I can just make a copy of this one. Lock it on the blue. Snap it to that guy. Make it unique. And now we can move it from this point. I'll lock it to the red. We're not copying it now because Yowzers. We're not locking it because it is not a copy. We're actually moving the piece itself. And let's see if we can get this thing to snap. Boom. Snapped. And we should now have an eighth inch gap right here. Let's confirm that. Yep. It's one eighth. Okay. Very good. Now what we can do is group this.
You know what? Let's not group it. Let's hold off for one second. Let's select it all. And let's first copy it. Oh, wait. Does that make sense? I think I might have messed this up. I did. Okay, so I am not meeting on a 2x4 stud here. So let's let's fix that. Yeah, let's push that back a little bit. So let's just hide this. And let's get our marks. So we can easily just pull our tape from here and use inference engine, get our midpoint. And then let's pull this back this way. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Let's make a new line that's 1 16th this way. And let's make, eh, it's so close in here. Well, if we zoom in real far, we can do it. And then we'll make a new line out this way. That's 1 16th in this direction. And now we can delete that line. That's our gap. And if we unhide, that sheet of plywood. Zoom in like so. And we move. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. We're going to push. We can snap to this line. Bingo. Now, this guy we can make a copy. Did I hide that? Let's see. Let's show hidden geometry. I did. Okay, cool. Let's uh, unhide this guy. Let's stop showing hidden geometry because that's really annoying. Okay. What we do need to do is hide this so I can see that point. No, actually, no. I can let me let me unhide that because unhide last because you can do things I think I can do this okay so I want to get it snapped to there so what if I move from this point I guess I could just move from this point too but let's say I was moving from the outside point snap to the red axis axis and can I yeah I can constrain to that line Constrained on line intersect plane. Yeah, I don't know if that's really working. Let's uh, try something a little different. Let's try coming in from this point. So it's on the red axis. Constrained on line intersect plane. Yeah, it's snapping to that line. All right, cool. I'm happy with that. So this should be all good on this corner here too. No, what happened? What happened over here? When did I mess that up? Oh. Guys, <laughs> again, this is about making this silly component being unique. Amazing. Keep messing this up. God, these components. All right, let's do it all over again. Oh, I still got my, uh, my marks here, so that's good. it. I think we got our hidden geometry. We still got this thing. I'm going to unhide that. Mm. 
going to make this easier too. I'm just going to hide this just so we can see what the heck we're doing easier. Okay. Unhide last. Somehow we still have an issue. Oh yeah, because this was this this sheet of ply was a totally different size. So let's uh let's just pull this out now to meet this edge. Here we go. Okay, let's put this wall back in. Okay, great. Now what we can do is take all these pieces of sheathing and we can copy them and move them just to the other side. Lock on that green axis and let's try 28 feet. It will basically get us to where we're going. might be exact. It isn't because we're actually sticking out beyond. What I need to do now is move it another three quarters of an inch. Oh no, maybe an inch and a half. Yeah, I think it's an inch and a half. Yeah, because we're sticking out three quarters of an inch beyond the frame, the trailer frame on that side. We're going to do the same on this side. So if I just block to the green and type in 1.5. Nope, I guess it was three quarters of an inch. Lock to the green and just snap. We just snap to this thing. And I didn't copy it. Amazing. Okay. Let's try this again. This time we're going to hold down control when we move. Lock to the green axis, hold down control, and we're going to do 28 point, well, no, we're going to do 28 feet, 0.75 inches. And that should take us exactly to where we're trying to go here. And it does. Okay, sweet. So let's do this. Let's select this group wall and then we will select the sheathing and we're going to call this, wait, which one was this? This is wall four. So let's, uh, this is already a group, so let's explode this group. Make sure that all the sheathing is selected. Make a new group. And put this into wall four. Done. You know what I think we forgot to do? We forgot to add those extra two by fours in here. Let's do that. Let's unlock this. this and copy and lock to the green axis and we'll move it 1.5 we'll do the same thing again copy green axis 1.5 okay still got a group lock that group rotate around this way. Okay, same deal. Unlock. Edit the group. Okay, we're going to copy.
copy. Lock to the green access, 1.5. Move, copy. Lock to the green access, 1.5. Okay. Okay, wall four. Wall four is good. All right, so before we do the groupings for wall three, let's first do the framed opening. Push that bad boy out. Oh. Intersection to that. To that. To intersection. Okay. Alright, so we got a group for that stuff. We'll explode this group. We're going to add in the sheathing. We're going to make it a group. Oh, you know, before we do that, there's a, there's a problem here. When you explode from a group, and that group is in a layer, all of the... Here, I'll just do it. All of the components inside of that group will inherit the layer that the group that grouped all those components together was in when you explode it. Uh, there's got to be a good reason for that. I don't like it. Um, let's get this group back. Groups in wall three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explode this group. Right now everything's in layer three. I'm going to select the sheathing. And now I'm going to put everything back into layer 0. And then I'm going to group it again. And then I'm going to put the whole group into wall 3. So what that does is now this group is in wall 3, but each individual component inside of that group is still in layer 0, which is what I want. OK. And you know what? I'm going to have to do that on the other side, too. Let me get rid of all the other walls except for four, so I don't have to struggle to get to where I'm trying to go. Okay, so if I explode this group, everything's in wall four, I'm going to put it all into wall zero, and I'm going to make another group, and then put that into wall four. Okay. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious, guys. <clears throat> this is the same problem. When I copied that sheathing over, I didn't make these unique. Amazing. Okay. And that's why I have this framed opening now over here. Good lord. Alright, so I got a serious problem with making these components unique. Okay, so let's make these unique. And let's just go in and do that kind of hacky fix that I did before. Oh boy. Okay, which is just to select this face. Let's pull it down and meet there. And then we can zoom in and we can erase these little edges or these little lines. Do the same thing for this guy.
Okay, feeling pretty good about that now. We got no windows on this wall. Alright, so I think at that point I need to break the sheathing away from the walls, so I'm going to explode all these groups, and I'm just going to shift click to remove the sheathing. Get it all? Probably not. Let's actually just rotate outside, okay. And now I'll right click and make group again. Oh, exploding is going to put back on, so it's going to inherit that layer. So let me put that back on layer zero. And I'm going to make a group. And then I'm going to put the group back into. I think this is. Well, was it wall two or wall three? That no, was wall two. Okay, and so what also happened is the sheathing inherited the group as well, so put that sheathing individual components back into layer zero as well. So now when I go into... Yes, okay, cool. Alright, so let me just keep on doing that all around. I'm going to explode. Put this all back into layer zero. I'm going to... Whoops. Darn it. Okay, let me try that again. Explode. Rotate. And I'm going to put all this back into layer 0. And then shift click all of the sheathing components. And then group these guys and make this. Jeez, I don't even know. Was it layer wall 3? Is wall three. Okay, so put that group back into wall three. And my sheathing is in all layer zero. Great. Same thing over here now. Which I'll just do it this way. Here's that group. I'm gonna explode it again. Put everything into layer zero. That was wall one. Shift click the sheathing. Okay, rotate. Right click on that, on the selection, and going to make it a group. Put that group into wall one. Now, same thing with this. Explode this group. Shift click to unselect the. Oh, Got to put it all into layer zero first. Now, shift click to unselect the sheathing. Rotate around so I can see it. Right click here, make group. This is wall four. Okay, and now, yeah, this wall four is not just the framing. So now we have all the sheathing separated. So I'm just going to start shift clicking all the sheathing around the entire place. And I might want to change this too. I'm probably going to change, I might break up the sheathing you know, per wall or something in the future. But right now, I'm just going to keep on grouping things in layers um, to fit my current needs. Um, okay, let me get this all selected. Okay, uh, I don't really feel like I need to make this into a group right now, so I'm just going to... Well, actually, that would probably be helpful. Yeah, I'm going to make it into a group. I can always explode it. Got to remember that. Make it a group. I can put the entire group into a new layer that I'm going to call sheathing. Okay, and now I can just drop all that sheathing. Like, whoa. Cool. 
So I'm going to do that because the next step, the next step here is going to be to do the platform. Now, platform framing is called platform framing primarily because of what I'm about to show you. So it's all about that top plate. Okay, so here's our top plate running along the entire uh, top of our framing members. First thing we need to do, um, actually, I can't remember. Let me look at the way I did this already. I see. I see. Okay. So, normally, like, if this was where our top plate we were going to put the roof on, you would just do a double plate, right? You'd overlap the seams as much as, much as you possibly could. Um, but in platform framing, if you want to put in a second floor, uh, you do it a little bit differently. Now, we're not doing a traditional second floor here. We are doing a uh, two lofts, but the lofts are going to be supported um, with rafters, or joists, whatever, I think they're actually joists when they're under the floor, I'm not sure. In any case, they're going to be supported with these, uh, with these joists, and those are going to be supported by the platform I'm going to create. So the lofts are getting supported uh, by joists that are, that are tied into the platform. So in order to do that, um, we take our top plate, and we're going to and I can actually over, I could probably overlap these seams. Let's see the way I did this here. I'll just show you here. It's kind of hard to see because I've kind of messed. Oh, right. I see how I did this now. Okay. Right. Okay. So we're going to create a, a two by four. Check one more thing. Okay, got it. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to try to get better at dealing with groups and components here. So we got this group. Going to edit the group. Right? I want this 2x4 right here. So if I... Well, let's start on this side. It'll be easier. So we got this 2x4 top plate component selected right now. Um, so first I'm going to make a copy of it. I wonder if I can do this all in rotate. I can. Sweet. Okay, so I'm going to lock it to the green axis and I'm going to hold it, hit control so it's going to copy it and then I'm going to select that corner and that corner and now I'm going to rotate it up 90 degrees. I still have to move it over I believe. Whoops. Ah, no I don't. It's perfect. Okay, cool. Um, so next thing, remember this is a component so I have to make it unique. Cannot forget to do that. Um, and uh, what's next here? Do I have to do anything else? Nope, it's in layer zero. Uh, actually, is it still part of this? Yes, okay, so it's still part of this group. So in order to separate it from this group, I have to explode. All these entities are going to take wall two, so I'll say wall zero. I will remove it from the selection, and I will group it back again. But now this group has to be put back into a wall. So I believe it's going to be wall two. Yep. Yeah, that's kind of a lot of work. Maybe I should just redraw these pieces. You know, it all comes down to that. I'm not sure. I'm trying to figure out what's the most effective use of my time here. Uh, so I'm just going to make this one long piece. Uh, you know, I'll break it up when I'm building it. Um, in a good, sensible way, but I don't need to get too crazy here. I don't need to like actually represent each individual piece of wood all the time. It's not really not really a good use of my time. Only for the important things, which is most of the stuff. Okay, so there's that piece. Great. Now I'm going to duplicate that over here. 
And lock it to the red axis. Oops. And back to move. And we will grab it from here, lock it to the red axis. And snap. Okay. Very good. Okay, so next step um, is to check something yeah I'm not gonna worry about the end walls yet uh, trying to make this as simple as possible okay so now we can take this co you know I'd like to take this component again but I don't want to deal with that group so I'm just gonna take this component whoops rotating on the wrong thing okay so check this out this is cool so rotate again on the green axis and I am going to control to copy, select these two points, and rotate ah, rotate up 90 degrees, and bam. Now I need to make this unique. Okay. And now I can copy this. Should have probably just done both of these and copied them together to the other side, but hey. Sometimes you forget. Okay. And snap. Okay, there we go. So what we've done here is we've created a platform on two sides um, that is going to allow us to put cross members like joists sitting on this ledge right here sitting from this ledge right here all the way over to this ledge and uh, yep that's a pretty big span for a 2x4 so what I'll be doing is I'll be doubling up the 2x4s two wide in pairs on 16 on center uh, to give it the strength it needs. Now remember it's just these are just lofts it's not like a full floor or anything so <clears throat> um, if I was really trying to uh, if I was really trying to make a, a true a true lo floor with like you know longer spans or I was gonna have lots and lots and lots of weight up there I would definitely not use two by fours uh, but again headroom is critical here so in any place where I can you know use a couple two by fours instead of one two by six um, for like joists like that I'm gonna do it because that's what's gonna save us that that headroom okay so that's the platform and uh, that we need in order to start building our upper portion of the wall framing. And that's like that's what I want to skip to right now. And I'm going to get back to the rest of this stuff. Okay, so let me just select these guys. And I'm going to just going to put these into a group. And I'm going to call that group platform. And then we'll put that group into layer platform. And now we can unselect that if we want. And our sheathing. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Okay, so let's uh, skip skip our, our loft joists and those little like cantilevered areas. And we're just going to go right up to framing the walls and the framed openings. Oh, you know what? I can't do that. And the reason why is because the walls... The walls on the uh, on the second story here, they are, yeah, they continue. They're continuous. They go out onto these uh, cantilevers here to try to to make the whole structure more rigid. So I actually have to deal with these. I have to deal with these uh, with these things right now. Okay, so let's just jump right in and and chat about that. Okay, so what I originally did, and I started talking about this before, but I don't remember where I got to, why I stopped. Um, 
let's uh, unhide everything. Huh. Where did my sheathing go? Did I delete the sheathing? Huh. Show hidden geometry? Where are these? Oops. Unhide. Huh. So I hid those inside of this group. Okay, so if I edit this group and I say unhide all. Okay, that's how we do it. Alright, let me just do that for the other side too. Yeah, you gotta be really careful. When you hide components or grouped entities um, inside of a group, you have to edit that group first and then unhide to get them un unhidden. If you're not editing that group, when you go to unhide, it won't unhide anything. So it's just a little thing to watch out for. I just learned. Okay, so my original shtick was, was this. Oops, let me get rid of hidden geometry. Okay, so basically I just built a little a little like platform here, just typical framing, and and I basically just nailed it right in to the uh, uh, to the outside of the sheathing. And then I'm supporting that with these pieces of cedar. And that, you know, that that's fine, I guess. You know, it's also getting tied in a little bit differently, too, because a little bit stronger because of this. This, uh, this sole plate is spanning way out from, you know, it's spanning from way over this platform um, and then right out onto here. So that's getting tied in. But there's no tie-in with these framing members into the main structure. And we're also tying in up here as well. But it would, be, it would be better if we could tie these guys in as well. They'll just make it even stronger. So what I did, that was a suggestion from my father-in-law. And I totally heard it, but here's the issue. <clears throat> Let me hide a bunch of stuff here. I can't hide platform. Okay, so the issue is that from inside the house, we, these are going to be visible. So we're going to like finish these, these uh, laminated 2x4s nicely. I might not even use laminated 2x4s, I might mill something. Maybe. We'll see. Um, some hardwood or something. Um, but they're visible. So we're trying to you know, mitigate um, how much, uh, you know, how much, you know, mitigate seeing any framing whatsoever. We just want to see these and our nice in interior finished walls. And then we'll look at the, uh, the underside of the hardwood floor framing, sorry, hardwood floors above them. Um, and we'll just like, you know, we'll, we'll like stain it or paint it or sand it and just finish it, make it look nice, nice enough. Um, so the issue is that what we can't do because of that, we can't have like these framing members jutting out way into the ceiling because there is no ceiling. There's no, the ceiling is completely exposed. So if we, you know, the best way to tie this in would obviously be to like have these things span over, over in, into, into the living space. But then you would see that. And it's not like we're putting drywall up there to cover that up. So I'm limited to what I can do there. Um, so what I did was, it's a little bit funky. I don't even, I don't even know how much benefit I'm getting out of this. It's not a tremendous amount, just a little bit more. I have this, uh, <clears throat> this kind of like custom little filler block piece. It's like inch and a half, probably by an inch and a half, or inch and three quarters. And then, um, what, what am I sitting on here? 
I'm actually sitting on. Yeah, this is the top plate for that end wall. And I just have like a little like little rabbit uh, joint cut out of the uh, out of these framing members. So that will allow me to like toenail. I'll be able to toenail in. Um, and I'll also be able to nail nail in on this side. Um, obviously, that is something. Oh, that won't be visible because we we could we could put our our uh, our wall paneling up above this, so I can nail in from this side. So I have you know the sheer strength of some of some like 16D nails coming in this way, and I can toenail with some 10Ds going in down here, and that's better. I guess it's a little better than just nailing it straight into the uh, the exterior sheathing and then into the you know the, the frame members from the outside. You know, you know, I'm looking at this. It adds some complications to the framing, and I'm not really seeing like the huge benefit from doing this. Um, so this is something you know. Maybe I'm gonna like take a moment and call my father-in-law, who knows a lot about construction, and see if he's got any other ideas and maybe I'll kick back with this in a minute after I do that. I'm going to start framing out the platform sticking out the, the ends of the tiny house here. Um, I thought I could start with the uh, <clears throat> with the framing of the, uh, the walls above the lofts but um, after thinking about it I realized I'm going to have some complications. Uh, you know, there is an order to construction, absolutely, uh, and uh, you need to really think things through before you start putting things together. You know, it's cool because the way that I am, you know, building this house in SketchUp is pretty much exactly the way that I'm going to be building it, and for the most part, probably the same order that I'm going to be building it in real life. So it's really cool that if I build it in SketchUp, in fact, I just saw somebody posted... Um, a comment on a video saying something to the effect of uh, if, you, if you can't build it in SketchUp you can't build it in real life and I laughed when I saw that because it's true like if you could if you can build it I like to look at it in the inverse if you can build it in SketchUp um, then you can build it in real life because it's literally you're doing the same thing you're taking pieces of wood you're cutting them and you're putting them together wow there's some details of like fastening and, and, and like an order and minor order details <clears throat> beyond that but you know, for the most part, like, I'm doing this with you right now. I have complete confidence that I'm going to be able to uh, pull this off in real life. Uh, so, that being said, let's start framing out this, uh, uh, this, uh, this platform here. So, let's go take a look at... Let me just get the dimension that I used on this platform already. Okay, let's see here. I got I'm not exactly sure why I chose this. I'm fine with it. I don't really care, but it's going to be a, one foot eleven and a quarter. Mm, actually, no, sorry. This is that's something else. Let me look over here. It's going to be get on this side. one foot ten and a half that is the actual total size so one foot ten and a half all right so let's start by drawing a rectangle and that's gonna be we're gonna snap that or lock it to the green axis and we're going to do one and a half by five and a quarter. Let's see if I could just do this with... Huh. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, I don't know why it's it's not giving me... It's giving me an approximate dimension on the, on the length. But I got one and a half, so I'll just do it. 1.5 comma 5.25. Okay, no problem. No, oh, actually, no. Sorry, I'm framing this wrong. I need to start in the other direction. Okay, let's see here. And I need to start on the end here. 
Okay. Let's try this again. All right, rectangle. I'm gonna lock to the green axis. No, to the red axis. Yes. Okay, so it's gonna be 1.5 comma 5.25. Okay, and I'm going to pull that, I think it's 82 inches, is the full width here, so let's see if that gets it. No, that was actually, sorry, I'm thinking about the space between the fenders. Let's just continue pulling this out the rest of the way. Okay, make that a component. All right, one foot ten and a half, I think it was. Man, I got a bad memory. Let's, uh, let's double check that. One foot ten and a half. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is let's copy this. Outside dimension. You know what? Let me just do a tape measure. One foot ten and a half. I'll pull this edge out on the uh, green axis. It's gonna be one foot ten and a half. Okay. And now I'm going to copy, lock on green, snap, snap on my line. Okay, now I'm going to draw, so that's a copy of that. Okay, great. We are in layer zero, so new rectangle. At one and a half. So weird. I don't know why it's giving me approximate dimensions. That tells me that something might be wrong. I don't really fully understand that. That's going to be a component. Oops. Huh. I don't know why it's giving me that approximate dimension sometimes. It's always like a, a sign of trouble. All right. Well, let's. Uh, we're going to double up on these guys on the ends for reasons that you will see in a moment. Lock on red. Um, but I'm going to do my 16 on center from the end. So select that again. This corner. Lock on red. 16. Select both of these guys. Red, 32. Okay, and we'll do all of them. Move, lock on red, and uh, 64. Okay. All right, so this is fine. Um, what we're going to do here is just take this guy and move him in a little bit. Lock him on red. And then we're going to take this guy. Move him a little bit. So let's now get into a better position. And move you over here. 
here, lock in one red. And we'll move you right here, locked on red. Okay, so we got our 16 on center, we got oops. We got our uh, two ends a little bit beefier with some more with some more uh, two by material. And now that we have that, let's move this out by three quarters of an inch. Actually, we've got to select all of these guys. Let's make a group out of that. And let's move it out on the green axis. Lock green, 0.75. All right, so what that's going to do is make room for that sheathing. So if we let's delete the guides, like those things. If I show sheathing, now you'll see that that thing is actually attached to the outside. Oh, was I supposed to go? I don't think I was supposed to go right to the outside. How do I do it over here? Yeah, just with the framing. Okay. This looks a little bit funny right now. But that is only because of the way that I did all this. In reality, there's a couple things that are going to change. First of all, this thing, these pieces are going to be three quarters of an inch in. Down here too. Yep, and then over here. Same thing. And these pieces of sheathing <coughs> are actually going to, uh, like this one down here, this will definitely protrude out a little further, like so. Point seven five. Same with this one. Actually, all of these will, but like this piece of sheathing is going to span out and cover the end wall that's going to be sitting above this uh, this uh, deck out in space right now. So we just gotta just gotta be just gotta know that. So when you're looking at this, it doesn't look too weird. Okay, so that's that. <coughs> uh, next thing is we need to actually actually need to put a piece of sheathing on the underside of this. So let's do that too. Okay, so rectangle. One foot ten and a half by where are we gonna be at here? Should probably take the tape measure to this first. Yeah, because I gotta get my midpoint and all that stuff. 
So I'll stop it right here. All right, so I'll I'll meet on this stud right here. Let's pull this off to the midpoint, and like we did before. Pull a new line one. Oops. Pull a new line one sixteenth off of this way. It didn't even work. One sixteenth, and then another line one. 1 16th in this direction. Get rid of that middle one, that'll be our gap. And then I can draw a rectangle from that point over there. Right to there. that down, 175, make that a component, I'll do the same right here, okay, so that we needed that to happen. We needed our underside sheathing underneath that subfloor stuff so that we could put in our 45 degree supports. Okay, so the 45 degree supports they are going to be let's first draw those. Okay, let's just draw them. All right, so let's do a rectangle. Look down. Okay, so rectangle. These are going to be five by fives. So five, comma five, five inch by five inch. Then we're going to. Make them however big we need to make them, make it a component. Next step is I'm going to rotate 45 degrees. Okay, that's 45. I'm going to move this. I'm going to move this to look something like this. Basically, I need, I want this thing to, come flush. I guess I'm going to want to trim around these guys. So it probably shouldn't be right on the edge. Huh. I'll leave that there for a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about this for a moment. Okay, I'm not 100% sure how I want to do this right now, so I'm just going to do it the best way I know how. And I can always change it later. So we are right on right there. So let's see here. If we can move, lock to the blue axis, orbit around a little bit. Basically, I want to come flush there. I think we might have just done it. Basically, I want to, want to, right there, basically. Okay, cool. Alrighty. Um, so here's the thing. I can try to mess with intersections and trimming, but the problem is, is that like I'm not. Like so, intersection like using the trimming tool in uh, in SketchUp is really good when you're intersecting lines with like a solid. But if I were to, in this case, I have multiple solids that I'm that I'm connecting into over here, so I don't see how that's going to work. So I think my best bet is just to draw new lines on this component. So if I just do that, 
let me edit this component. I got the faces. I'm going to draw a line here, right at the end there, up to the intersection here, right? And then let me rotate around, draw another line from here to here. Okay, keep rotating around. Dokey. Draw another line from here down to all the way down there. And we need one more line. Okay, so now, now I got all those. So now I got, now I got faces that end right there. And I can trim off the rest. So let me, let me actually do the same thing over here. Let me draw lines up here while I'm while I'm here. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll lock to the red axis just because I can't see exactly what I'm doing. Oh, you know what? I gotta undo that. Gotta select this face. I think I gotta select that face. I'm not even sure. Couldn't hurt. Okay. Gotta be on the green axis. Whoa, not the green axis. Heck. Do this. You know what I think I can do? Okay, check this out. Okay, let me select this. I got a group here. So I'm going to hide that group. In addition to that group, I'll hide all the sheathing too just happened. Huh. How did this thing become part of the sheathing group? I must have done, must have been in that group when I, yeah, something, something happened. I was in that group, so well, I need to explode this. That's the sheathing group. You know, I need to put all these guys into layer zero, remove this out of there, and put everything back into sheathing. Okay, so we're good on that. Get rid of sheathing, and I'm going to get rid of the... And I'm going to hide this. Okay, so now I should be able to select this face, and I should be able to push this into oblivion. Sweet. So that worked. I could have done that down here too. Well, actually, I still can. Look at that. I can select that right there. Huh. Interesting. Let's see what happens if I do that. Yeah. That took care of it. I think I might have some extra lines drawn here, maybe. Nope, I don't. I just... I guess the lines that I drew on these faces, d these three faces, this one, this one, and this one, uh, when I pushed it, it would have created those for me, but since they already existed, it just didn't do anything. So that makes sense. Okay. So there's our... That's how we make our support there. Let's, uh, let's copy that over. Lock on the red. Move it around a little bit. And why can't I snap? What the heck? Oh, I think I 
was snapped. Oh, it just didn't look like it was snapped because there's a gap between there for the sheathing. Okay. So that is that. Now we can unhide. Last. And we can put our sheathing back in. And there we go. There it is. We got our 45 degree 5x5 five five supports. I got cedar on the property here. Uh, already cut into cants. Uh, a little bit bigger than 5x5, five five, but I can just resaw that down and use it for this. Be totally sweet. Okay. Looking good here. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is trim this sheathing down. For sure. So, well, you know what? Let's actually, since we got this thing done, let's actually make a group out of it. Let's uh, explode this group. Okay. What just happened? I see. I see what happened. I'm going to do that explode. So we got this little uh, issue here. That's because on that side I was doing it to, yeah, I did it to the outside of the sheathing on the other wall. But that is incorrect. So let's just move it. I'll just scoot it in a little bit. Red axis lock. Okay, there we go. Three quarters. Okay, that problem is solved. Okay, so I'm going to call this, I don't know, it's not really a cantilever, but I'll call it a cantilever because I don't know what else to call it. So I'm going to first explode this group. It's already in layer zero. That's fine. I'm going to add in to the selection these two guys. And I'm going to make a new layer. No, I'm going to put these all in one group first. Make a group. Make a new layer. Cantilever. Can you smell that? Looks good to me. Cantilever 1. Put this into cantilever 1. Okay, cool. Now the sheathing. The little piece is still on there. But that's fine. Okay, sweet. Let's make a copy. say 30 feet just to get it over there. Holy cow. Did that literally line up perfectly? That is insane. <laughs> if that happened. So there's this thing I can do. Flip along red. Now see that didn't do it. How about we flip along green. Yeah. Totally did it. Nice. So there's a flip feature when you were in the right click context menu. Instead of me rotating it all around, I could just flip it. Alright. So now I can just move it in. Green axis until it snaps. There we go. So this guy right here, we gotta make him unique. Oh, it doesn't have to be unique because we don't have to, it's, it doesn't have to be unique because it's not a component, just a group. Okay. So this group we're going to have to put into cantilever 2. cantilever 1 and now it's cantilever 2. Alright, we do need to copy that piece of sheathing though. That needs to stay in the sheathing group. 
was two pieces of sheathing actually. Uh, okay, that's another problem. We need to. Wait, what's going on? I thought I had all the sheathing. Huh. I thought I had all the sheathing in a group, but I didn't. Something got messed up. I'll have to add that back in a minute. Alrighty. So let's uh, keep these exactly as they are. Let's move these guys. Copy, lock to green, and move them 30 feet. Just to get over there. can't believe that the 30 feet just goes perfectly. It's amazing. Alright, so that's done already. Alright, so those are components. We have to make these unique. Because I do not want them changing on both sides. I think we have to actually make these guys unique too. What is this? This is component number 94. What is this? Component number 94. Yeah, so if I was to scale this thing. Oh no. Looks like that didn't take effect. Wonder why. I don't think I made these unique. Huh. Alright. Whatevs. Okay, so, okay, let's get all the sheathing in the same group now. This guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Ugh, oh, I just lost my selection. Let's make a group for the sheathing. Somehow I lost that along the way. And now we can select the sheathing all in one thing, and that entire group is on a layer that I can disappear. Okay. Save. Should be saving more often. Okay, next step. Let's uh, trim the sheathing down over here. We can do that very simply. Just edit this component. Create a new line. There. To there. And then we can push this in and make it disappear. Same thing with this. Line from there. There, push this in to make it disappear. Okay. Do the same thing over here.
disappear with the push tool. Alright. We're opening up our way. We're getting ready to... Oh, I think I made a mistake already. I can see it now. I couldn't see it before. Oh no. No, I don't think I did. Uh, yes I did. Uh, very minor mistake. No big deal. Uh, but I do, I am going to need to fix that sheathing that I just, that I just deleted. Okay, so as we can see in my previous model, um, this platform right here, this platform, uh, two by member, I actually aligned the top of the framing member here with that platform. So the top plate, as you can see over here, would go straight across onto that platform. So I need to do that right now. I need to fix that. Okay, so we're going to take, this is already in a group, so we're just going to move it up. And we're going to align with the up arrow to align with blue. And it looks like I need to rotate around in order to do this the way I want. Okay, I'm constra constrained to line on line from point. So I think I got it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so a couple things have to happen now. I need to pull this piece of sheathing up to there. Yep. And do the same thing with this piece of sheathing. And then what I can do, just to illustrate, this is going to change, but I can illustrate with that gets pulled out to there. So that top plate comes all the way out. And we got the same thing going on. So now I also have to pull the sheathing up. Okay. Up arrow to snip to lock the blue. looking good. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Okay, let's lock to blue axis. Constrained online from point. So I think I got that. Yep. That is perfect. Oh, let me get that sheathing up. Everything is up, and now I can pull this out. Again, just to illustrate, this is probably going to change. Oh 
Oh, yes. Of course, there's this sheathing as well. Lock to blue. Snap. Okay. Save. There we go. Cantilevered platforms. And like I mentioned earlier, um, I'm going to be using I'm going to be using stainless steel carriage bolts to go through uh, to go through all the way through that 45 degree piece of cedar into the corner post, and it will protrude through the corner post out the other end, and I'm going to lock that down with a with with a stainless nut and uh, and uh, like a lock washer or like a stop nut or something like that. Okay. Oh yeah, so the other thing I need to that I wanted to do here was so that I could like sink in nice and good into get two bolts in there. I got two right now. Let me hide this. Yeah, I got two pieces of two by. But they're only getting me three inches. And I got a five inch piece. I got a five inch wide piece of uh, <clears throat> cedar here, and I want to get a bolt up here and a bolt up here. Carriage bolt's going to be pretty gnarly to do that with. Maybe up here I'll use lags. I'm not really sure. The point is, I'm just going to add another 2x6 right next to here. Just so I have like a really just bomber like nailing block to connect to from this from this uh, piece of cedar. What happens if we unhide last? Because yeah, it's only going to give me that one. All right. Well, if I go into here, what if I unhide last? For all? Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, uh, oops. I got to do that on the other side. So you can't unhide all, again, to reiterate, you have to edit this group. The hiding is group specific, so now I can unhide all in that, all in that group. All right. All right, so now I'm ready to start framing up my walls on, the, uh, on top of the platform. How did this happen again? How does this happen? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing to make this happen. Where is this piece of freaking plywood coming from? Oh, it must have been hidden. That's right. So what's happening is I'm unhiding all and some hid any hidden components, any hidden components or groups or entities that I hid previously that I forgot about, they're becoming visible. And that's why I think it came out of nowhere. Save. Alright, so let's start framing up above the lofted area. 
So what we're going to do is let's first hide all the sheathing. And you know what maybe I want to do? We can actually put the lofts in. You know, I don't need to draw every single little thing, guys. I'm going to take... I've been trying to redraw all this stuff for you guys, but, like, I think I'm just going to instead... I'm going to take the loft pieces from this other drawing here. Oh, would you look at that? Okay. Okay, this is actually turned around 180 degrees, I think. Well, no, it's not. It's in the right orientation. All right, sweet. Let's paste these guys in. Okay. Let's see a couple things. First of all, material-wise, we have to remove the materials. So if we just... Colors. Where's white? Here's white. We can just paint these white. Why isn't that working? Huh. Uh, we probably have to... Probably have to go into here. Select this. No. So weird. Why can't I paint this? Okay. Let's, uh. Try something else. This is a group. Let's try exploding the group. And what do we got in here? We got these groups. Oh man, so they're all groups. Yeah, let's just screw this. I'm gonna revert out of this. All right, so let's just draw some uh, some of this loft framing real quick. Um, I think it makes sense to do it right now. Um, let's just take a quick look at how I how I did it over here. Yeah, okay, so what I did was, 16 on center, I centered these pieces, these laminated 2x4s. So they are like that. And then this one, this one I believe is just flush. Yeah, it's just flush. Okay. Alrighty, let's see how many of these I went out here. I went, what I said... One, two, three, four, five, sixteen on centers that went out. So one, two, three, four. I don't have to, I'll just do it as I go. Alright, so let's uh let's hide a couple things. Platform. Let's uh I don't wanna hide all of platform, I just wanna hide these things. hide these two because this is what's making it hard to see in there. <clears throat> okay. And now I can do some drawing. Let's draw a rectangle. And this is going to be 3.5 comma 1.5. And I'm going to pull this out. We're going to snap right to there. Great. Make a component. Okay, so let's pull this thing over this way. And in reality, what we need to snap to... So we're going we're gonna to lock to the green axis. And then I'm going to... Boom. Snap right to the edge there. So... Uh, the reason I'm doing this right here with a piece of a little piece of half inch blocking in between is because um, I want to I need to I need to have on the exterior framing I need to have that frame member on the exterior but then on the interior I also want to be flush right here 
because that's going to give me the ability when we put our paneling in one two three paneling along this I'm going to be able to panel all the way up to the uh, to the bottom of the actual loft uh, hardwood flooring um, okay so from there from there what I need to do what I like to do is get my first 16 on center Where's my first 16 on center? So in order to figure that out, we're going to take this tape, lock it to the green, and we're going to type 16. Oh, <laughs> here's the other problem with this too, is that this is the end of the wall here. So that's actually not going to be 16 on center. Let me, let me do what I did in the last one. Let me, I'll start on the other side. What I did was I came out one, two, three, four, five, six. I came out to the sixth one. Let me just measure how far I came out. That is not a good way to do it. I came out to the one that was six foot eight. I came out to the stud that was six foot eight. Out from the end. Okay, so. Six foot, six and a half. Oh wow, this is different. Why the heck would this be different? I might have done my studs differently. Interesting. So that's going to change some stuff. All right. Well, what's the closest to six foot eight we got? Six foot six and a half. I can roll with that. Um, it's an inch and a half off, so <clears throat> there's a bunch of reasons why that could be. Um, but logical reasons. You know what? Let me let me make sure that I'm 16 on center. Let me measure all the way across here. So 16. Aha. Oh no, 16. It's just the wrong one. 16. What? 16. 16. 16. Sixteen. 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 <clears throat> Sixteen. Sixteen. Oh, this is that weird one where it doesn't really exactly match up, but I do I do compensate for it. So we got to go 32. Let's just skip that completely. 32. 16. Right to that one right there. 16. <clears throat> 16. 16 to that one. 16, 16, huh, do I have a 32? No, I don't because, okay, so I don't really have a 16 here, why is that? Five and a quarter. left something out here. Let's do this. Let's pull this edge off and do 16 inches. Oh, I see. Okay, so I basically had it. I had it covered, but I'm missing this little piece right here, so I need to add that. That's my issue.
Okay. So if I go back and look over here, these are probably not 16 apart. These are going to be 16. And then we got one foot two and three quarters to there. And I did exactly that right here. You see I have, I got a piece right there. So one foot two and three quarters. That's what I did there. So I just gotta do whatever makes sense here. It'd be over. Let me actually pull this again. 16, okay. You know, I really need that. I really need that on the other side. Pull off of here. 16. Okay, so that's going to be the center point. All right. So let me just, yeah, so let's do that. Let's just copy one of these guys. Lock to green, and I'm going to Actually able to snap to this thing. Did that work? Okay, cool. It did work. All right, so that's my center point on sixteen. Oh no, what am I talking about? That's not my center point. I messed that up. My center point. It's actually over here. We delete these guides. Pull off of this. I have to pull off the center point. I can't really do that. So what I need to do Basically, I need to go to 16, which this is, and then add 3 quarters of an inch to get to the center. This is the edge. So this thing just needs to move over by 3 quarters of an inch. Lock to green, 0.75. Now I can duplicate this. first <clears throat> yeah so this is kind of a confusing one but kind of a weird place to start but now I can pull 16 I can pull pairs of these 16 OC on center so check this out now I got a pair I can say move snap to green and just say 16 and now I'm going to be directly centered with the rest of these. Okay, same thing. Walk to green, control, and then 16. Take two of these, or I can take four of these. Move, lock, control to 
copy, lock to green, 32. One, two, three, four, five. We've got one more to do. Green and sixteen. That is centered directly on the sixteen on center, two by four. Okay. So that's that. Now what we can do is we can take a bunch of these. What group is this in? Uh, currently this is in platform. Actually that's okay. We can keep this in platform. Take all of these guys. Just save ourselves a little bit of time. And copy, and we'll lock to the green, and then we'll just move out of here. You know what, before I do that, let me just undo that. Let me mark, oh, see all these are actually 16 on center. Yeah, so let me just mark the center here. Okay, so let's get the midpoint. This guy, and where's our 16? Wrong one. It's from this one, it must be. 16. Sixteen. Okay, so it's the midpoint of this one. That's fine. What I can just do is do pull lock to green, do 16.75 to get, come on, there we go, 16.75 to get to the center of that. Okay, that's what we're going to do that, and now what I can do, I will just copy, snap to green, and I'm just going to get these guys. over here. Okay, so now I can move them all over another inch and a half and I'll be centered. Snap to green, 1.5, and now I'm centered on inch and a half, or I'm centered on 16. They're all right on 16. Okay, so I just need to do this last one. This one's easy. See, this one... Okay. Locked green. Snap to there. Grab this guy. And snap it out. Or lock it on green. And then I can snap it right to there with a half inch piece of blocking in between. All right, um, this may not be our, the exact lofts, but it's pretty darn close. So let me edit this. And now I'm gonna unhide all in that group. And I'll get my, my, my uh, soul plates back. And we'll save that. Okay. Okay, so I just uh, had a little conversation with my father-in-law and I have a, a good solution here for how I'm going to make these connections really strong to the uh, uh, to this like little cantilevered uh, extension. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this this piece of the platform this uh, this plate that's on edge, and I'm going to extend that all the way out. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing for 
for the top plate on the uh, on the walls as well. And that's going to come all the way out, so it's going to be tied in. So the more of the main structure will be tied into this uh, this extension here. Um, so there's a few other details that I'm going to get into with that, um, but that's the main gist of it. So uh, let me let me just get right on that then. I'm, try, I'm just trying to think of the best way to tackle this to to begin to tackle this. Okay, I'm going to start by hiding these two. Okay. Um, then I'm going to, I guess I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete this piece here. And I'm going to push this thing. I'm going to push this in an inch and a half. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Delete this. Push this in an inch and a half. Okay, so now, now I can actually extend that plate out. So let me get in here and pull that out. Actually, I'm not ready to do that yet. Uh, another thing that I need to do is I need to move this whole thing in. Let's start with. Now nah, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna move the whole group in. I'm gonna move everything in. I'm gonna snap it. What am I on green axis? So I'm gonna snap it to right. I think I'm on. Yeah, I am. I'll snap that to right there. Okay, so that's snapped to right there. And what that's going to do, <clears throat> that's going to get rid of that piece of plywood of sheathing that was in between. And it's going to allow me to nail directly into the framing instead of having this piece of plywood pushing me out three quarters of an inch so I get a better connection. And I'm just going to sheathe to underneath this instead. Okay, so now, now that I have that done. I think what I'm also going to do is I want to recoup. I want this to be like a, a true like two feet. So let's see how far that like, right now we got. Right now we only got one foot ten and a half. I think I want to make this like a real two feet. So I'm going to do that. One foot ten and a half. So we need an inch and a half more out. So let's do this. Let's move this guy out. Green axis, lock it, 0.5 inches. And now these are these are all components, so they should all come out together. Yep, 1.5. Sweet. It's a perfect example of how components can save you time there. All right, so now I got this platform is exactly two feet. Okay, so that's good. Now I'm going to take, well, actually I need to get, I need to push this back. I need to get rid of this one too. Get rid of that as well. And I need to push this in, push it in what, an inch and a half so far? Let's push it in another two inches so that this plate can come out. This guy needs to go. This guy, I think it's like another half inch he needs to go in to go to there. Yeah, it's another half inch. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, we're going to push these guys in another two inches. So that, that plate has enough room to come out. We'll move this guy in a half an inch. Okay, perfect. Okay, so notice, when these come out, 
when these two come out, this piece and this piece here, they're going to be about a quarter inch shy. So we've got three and a half plus an inch and a half. That makes five inches. And this is a two by, these are two by sixes, so they're five and a quarter. So that means that, uh, that I'm going to have to rip down all of these framing members to five inches. <coughs> but that's totally fine. Um, there's no problem doing that. Or I guess I could put like a little quarter inch like pack out on the bottom. It's kind of weird. I don't really want to do that. If it was like an inch, that would be a different story. I could pack that out, but that's not going to work. So next thing I want to do is I want to pull this out two feet. do the same thing with this one. Pull this out. Actually it's not two feet. It's we want to go an inch and a half less than two feet so we can get the connection on the outside. So it's a, a one foot one foot ten and a half inches. this in an inch and a half. Okay, looking good. We'll pull this thing out. this thing. How did I move that in? What happened there? I'm going to push that in three and a half. Oh, I see what happened. There are components. 3.5. Okay, so this one I have to make unique. Pull this one out. 3.5. Okay. That's way stronger now. I'm going to worry about doing those other changes later. Okay, so let's finish up what we were doing here. So we, let's take this thing out. is going to come out to the same point with this thing. And this guy is going to come out three and a half inches. 3.5. Okay, sweet. Alright, so next step is to push this in a quarter inch. So I'm going to be ripping all this stuff down to f all these members down to five inches. So these are going to be the same exact thing. Quarter inch. So now those are all flush. Probably I will put in some blocking in right here. Probably put some blocking. Okay, so now let's deal with these two. These have to go up 0.25. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, 
so now we got plenty to like tie into there we actually got exactly five inches that's perfect we got five inches of material to tie into in there and that is the exact width of these these cedar pieces um, yes the question is Yeah, so let's move these up straight on the, the blue axis. Now let's move them out on the green axis. Okay, so we'll do that. And now I need to get that, I need to deal with that sheathing. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's undo that. Let's put all the sheathing back in. So what has changed here? Okay, these two pieces of sheathing need to move up. We've made the cantilever a little bit bigger, so we're going to pull that out. Same thing over here. Pull that out. Okay, so we've still got a gap now on these guys. So we need to move this up on the blue axis and snap to there. Okay, it solves that. Right, but now we need to move these out. So I'm wondering if I can even do this, because if I move this out on the green, snap it right to the edge there. What happens over here, how do I make that bigger so I can scale it? What does that do? How does scale work? Oh, okay. So let's select this guy and this guy. Oops. Oh wait, didn't need to scale actually, just scale that. Okay. So that's not what I want. That's not what I want. That's not what I want. It's also not what I want. Okay, maybe, I don't know, maybe scale doesn't work like that. Maybe I need to hide all the sheathing. So I can actually see. And if I use this, if I snap to this edge green axis and go out. Three quarters. And then I scale this and I come bring this down. Oh, see I can't make that work anyway. I don't I don't like this scaling. It doesn't seem to be doing what I want it to do. 
So this is what I'm going to do instead. I'm just going to have to redraw these pieces. Let's get rid of them. Okay, sheathing. Put that back on. Alright, let's try this again. So now I'm going to do a rectangle. This is going to be 5, 5. Okay. And I'm going to just drag it out really long. Make it a component. And I'm going to rotate it. 45. Oops, I'm going to rotate it. I'm negative 45, like the way I'm doing here. That didn't work at all. Let's switch this. Rotate it from there to there. 45. Okay. Okay, let's get it up there. this now. Uh, let's just let's just bring this up. And go back to move. We're going to run up and down. Okay. Exactly where I want that. Okay, so now <clears throat> I think all we got to do is draw a line. We did this before. there yet. We need to move in slightly. So there we go. Now we can draw this line from there to there. Perfect. And now we can push this into oblivion, get rid of it. Okay, I think we got it. If we get rid of the sheathing. Oh no. Still gotta draw this. Still gotta draw a line here now. Okay, so let's get a line here. From the intersection down to this intersection. And now let's get rid of the sheathing. And now I can click this and I can push this into oblivion. Get rid of it. Okay, let's put the sheathing back. And there we go. All right, so now I got this new member here, and we're going to duplicate that. And that is going to be on the red axis.
Just didn't push that to the wrong point. Okay, that looks like it's fixed now. Save that. <clears throat> okay, so just gonna copy those uh, that finished cantilever uh, extension over to the other side. So with components, I can see that I hadn't making hadn't made this unique. So a lot of weird changes happening here. It doesn't really matter. Just gonna delete it completely and going to first push this plywood down, this sheathing, because I know it's going to interfere with what I'm doing. Now, that's probably enough. Okay. Do the same thing here. Okay, just get this really far out of the way. Okay, and I also want to hide this sheathing. I'm going to hide these two guys because they're going to be confusing. Okay, so let's hop on over here again and let's grab all of this. Actually, before I do that, cancel it. Let's let's uh, let's explode this. Select these two supports and add those to the cantilever group. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna make this as one group. And we're going to put it into cantilever one. Okay, so now what we can do is we got that. Let's just let's just move it 30 feet because that seems to be our magic number. Okay, and. Basically almost perfect. Okay, so now we are just going to flip along blue. Whoa. Wrong axis. We're gonna flip along red? Nope. We're gonna flip along green. That's gonna be the one. Okay, sweet. There we go. And now we can move this thing right in. Let's also get rid of the sheathing layer so we can see some more. And we're gonna move this in along the green axis and snap to that. Okay, cool. Now we gotta do the same thing. We gotta extend these guys. These guys are in the platform group. Let's do this one first actually. Well, actually, this is not even the platform group. This is in a frame wall group from the first level. snap right to there and we'll do the same for you snap right to there okay so how are we looking over here now looking pretty good so next thing we need to do since uh, this was a separate frame wall component, they're not clones, or rather components of, we need to bring that one out too. OK, 
Okay. I think we're looking pretty good now. Alright, let's put our sheathing back in. Okay, now we can bring this all the way up. Snap it right along in there. Perfect. The same thing with this guy. are in place. Now we have some hidden hidden pieces of sheathing that we're going to get back right there. Alright, so we need to move these up. On the blue axis. Okay, looking good there. And now we need to pull these out. Whoops. Shoot. That didn't work for some reason. Okay, move. Blue axis. Snap. There we go. I'm gonna do the same thing with this. Eh, I don't like doing it in there. Let's do it right over here. So how did I deal with that on the other side? I see. I just kept it in there. All in there. Okay, let's do that. whole plywood spacing thing. I have to figure out. Okay. Push this in. 0.75. And we'll pull this out. That's interesting, I did this differently. Wonder if I did this differently over there too. No. Somehow I managed to do this differently. Okay. Let's push this in. 0.75. Pull this out. 0.75. Push this in 0.75 and pull this out 0.75. Okay. 
Okay. There, I think we got it. Nope. So close. Huh. I guess those were un those were not unique. Those were copies of the ones above. Alrighty, so we're gonna have to make this component unique. Make this component unique. And then we'll, we'll just kinda Yeah. done. Do the same for this one. Scope that out real quick. Looks good. Add the sheathing back. All right, we got our super strong bomber, like uh, cantilevered extensions. And what's really, what's going to be really nice about this method is that let me get rid of the sheathing again, because we're going to get the strength of of this two by four plating, this this platform extending out. What we have the the luxury of doing now, instead of instead of uh, you know building this like on the ground and then having to lift it in and nail it to the side of the uh nail it to the side of the um the house and then having to like you know jack it up or support it somehow while we put in these 45 degree angle uh cedar uh pieces um this is this uh framing up here is going to hold it and it's just going to allow it to just cantilever and hang out in space and then we can come in later at our leisure and put these guys in. So that's going to make the installation of this in some ways a lot easier.